Good morning again. The following interview was conducted for the Purdue University Oral History Program with Everett Cor W. Corley on uh, Friday, May the 2nd, 2008, in Stewart Center 263. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Good morning again. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. I was born on October 11th, 1927 at 28 South Sheridan Avenue uh, here in Indianapolis, Indiana. My doctor was Dr. Blake Meyer. I was born at home uh, at the address of my uh, father's parents. Uh, my father was Avert Henry Corley, and my mother was Pauline Valletta Wallace Corley. And uh, I, uh, my parents were divorced when I was one years old. And my mother took me to live with her parents, Reverend J.P.Q. Wallace and Mrs. Al Mary Wallace at 1945 Carrollton Avenue in Annapolis, Indiana. That's who raised me. Uh, my grandparents uh, lived here in Indianapolis. Uh, we had a farm up in Hamilton County, which is the Robert Settlement. It's a black settlement about 30 miles between here and Kokomo. And uh, we would uh, go up there at least once a week. My grandfather was a presiding elder for the AME Church, but he also was a gentleman farmer. And uh, it's been in the family since 1848, given by land grant from President Van Buren. Uh, and we still have the farm. Grandpa uh, uh, went up there at least once a week to look it over. So I was acclimated to rural life and also urban life. We had uh, tenant farmers to farm it, uh, Miss John and Mary Cunningham. Uh, all the farmers up there got along very, very nice. And I can remember as a child the, the event of thrashing time when I used to go tramp down the salad in the salo and then the big feast afterwards um, given by the wives of the farmers, both white and black. They, there were a lot of uh, cooperation between the farmers up there at that time. Um, where, did you, where did you go to grade school? Tell us about grade school. I, I went to uh, uh, city schools. I went to school 56 and they were city public schools in 26 and um, and Attic High School uh, for a while. At the end of my sophomore year, when I was 16 years old, I dropped out of high school, it was doing World War II, and entered the service on March 17, 1944, and went into the Marine Corps. And uh, I served a year in the Pacific at Saipan and Marion Islands. After the war in 1946, I re-enlisted for two years and was sent to Guam. And But I was put in reserves and had an obligation if there's ever another war, I'd be recalled. And I didn't know that when I joined the reserves. Um, after getting out of service on August 25th, 1947, I decided to go back to high school and graduate. And my people had moved up on the farm then. And I graduated from Jackson Central High School, Arcadia, Indiana. At, I was the only black male in the school. Got along fine, played football, vice president of the senior class, and everything worked out nice at the high school. I decided I'd apply to uh, Purdue and was accepted. And uh, I entered Purdue the spring semester of 1950 on GI Bill, which was a godsend, as it paid all my fees and gave me $75 a month in subsistence. I was assigned to a room in Vets Housing, which was off of State Street, Quonset Hut, divided up into rooms called Mohawk Two. And I was the only black in Mohawk too, but everybody, including the person in charge, were real nice and made no distinction. 
um, of me from other students. Uh, we uh, entered a week before uh, the upperclassmen. It was, it was called orientation week back then. And we had to take physicals and register for classes, buy books. And then uh, we went to the old uh, Fowler Hall Auditorium off to State Street, and we were versed on rules of the university as freshmen. The whole Purdue uh, student body wasn't that much. I think it had approximately 10,000 students, maybe a little more. But, but uh, there were about 40 black students at the school, 30 males, I mean, and uh, 10 females. Um, the uh, black females could stay in WRH and Dormant Hall, but the black males could not stay in Cary Hall at that time. They could stay in best housing and co-op housing. However, later on in the summer of 1951, I stayed in Cary Hall. I think I was the first black for a while until I found out that black Marines on the B-12 program did stay in Cary Hall in 1945, including Fred Branch, who was the first black officer in the Marine Corps. And also, he was his, his teammate was President Hanson, Hanson, who was a on the track team with him in 1945. And uh, he was in the V-12 program at that time. And, uh, what, uh, tell us about campus life, and uh, I think you were involved in athletics. Yes. Uh, I uh, <laughs> went over to <laughs> the uh, Mackey, is where you, Mackey Field House. Okay. And uh, I saw... Uh, that might have been Lambert Field House. Lambert Field House, right. And I saw um, um, the coach was Stu Holcomb, and he had just uh, he had been the coach at Army, and uh, I asked him if I could go out f for football, and uh, he said sure. And I had played a little football the little time I was eligible in high school. I didn't have much eligibility because I was 19 uh, year, uh, years old, and after 19, you couldn't play in high school. But uh, my coach was Forrest McCaffrey, who was a Purdue graduate and a football ex-football player at Purdue. And uh, he said, well, good. And I went out, he got the equipment. He told the equipment manager to equip me and my coach, freshman coach, was Joe Dean Hart, who later on I found out was the mayor of West Lafayette. That's correct. But he used to be the coach at Cathedral High School here in Indianapolis. My goodness. And a uh, very fine guy. And he kept encouraging me to stay out because I was taking a lot of punishment. <laughs> Big lineman uh, tackling and you had to be out there at three o'clock every day, and I was ready to call it quits because I wasn't on scholarship. They didn't give black scholarships in football back then. They did in track, but not in football. And so you just went out on your own. But with the encouragement of Joe Deanhart, uh, I would have made the varsity. But I got injured. I tore my knee up and went to San Elizabeth Hospital, and. Uh, and then uh, recuperated there at the university at the facilities there at, at Purdue. Uh, I had a roommate also, Herman Murray, that uh, went out for, he's a black fellow, he went out for football on his own, and he played four years of B-team football, and, they, and he did letter, and he graduated in 50 two and then went in the Navy. Um, the uh, Purdue was a unique experience <clears throat> because there were very few black students in agriculture when I was there. Was that the course of study you were taking in agriculture? Yes. Okay. And uh, I was embraced by people like Dean Fenler, Dean Reed, Dr. Gard, Dr. Hicks, yeah, Dr. Hicks, I had him at Econ, he had just come here from Australia and he just got his PhD. And I think we were his first or second class. Uh, and uh, 
Dr. Cooley, who is in Alma Husbandry, Sam Posterweight, who just came here from West Virginia. I think we were about his first or second class when he just got here. And uh, it was a, quite a unique experience, and everybody uh, pushed me forward and gave me encouragement in my studies. And uh, I had uh, other students also who graduated from my high school that were in at Purdue, and they helped me with my studies. I didn't realize at first you could not get a day behind or you're lost, <laughs> and I needed the help of these up, upperclassmen. Good. When you were a freshman, did you wear those freshman beanies? Did you ha did they have those? They had those, but okay. being I was an old vet, <laughs> I'd been in service. Okay. They, I didn't. Uh, you didn't have to wear the I beanie. Have to wear. But a lot of the freshmen had to wear them. Yeah, I remember. But, I hear heard the, about that. The veterans and usually were a little more mature, and we stayed in vet housing rather than in the dormitories. And they didn't uh, necessarily say that you had to wear the beanies, but other freshmen did have to wear them, yes. Okay. What was vet housing? Did you have your meals there, too? No, I ate at the union building. The, I see. I um, bought my own meals. They gave the government gave me seventy five dollars a month for subsistence to buy meals, which at that time you could make out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, but no, I I didn't eat in the dining hall. As I said, we didn't stay. We weren't sure. allowed to stay in the dormitories at that sure. time. Okay. Uh, male black males weren't. Black females were. Okay. Where were you taking your classes? Uh, was that an Ag Administration building? or? I, I took my classes Ag Administration building. Also, all over the campus, I had to walk. That was a big deal because there was a bell that rang uh, uh, by the metallurgical building that, that had a big tower and uh, it gave you 15 minutes to get to class. No, it gave us 10 minutes to get to class, and I had to walk from Ag Administration to over there by Lambert where those um, prefab, to take Chem 1 and 2, those prefab barracks were. <laughs> and that was a long walk, and of course Purdue was a walking campus back then. Sure, that's right. And, and uh, but the sidewalk stayed crowded, so you really had to hustle to get, in 10 minutes, to get from one end of the campus to the other. Were there many bicycles on campus? Did you have, uh, did many students have bicycles? There were quite a few bicycles, mm -hmm. but they didn't uh, uh, go too much for bicycles at that time because they said it congested okay. the uh, the walking. Mostly bicycles are used for recreation. Okay. okay. Uh, now on the athletics, did you go to the football games? You you, you weren't able to play after you got hurt. No, oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, play after that. I would have been on. Uh, that 1950 squad had I not been called back in service. I was also called back in service in the summer of 50. Oh, really? Yes, where did you where, when the Corps went. Pardon? Where did you have to uh, serve then? Just for the summer? No, no the Korean War broke out, and I told you I was obligated by being in, in the reserves, and they called, re, re called me back in the service, but I got out in April 51 and came back to Purdue. Okay, okay. And went to summer school, and I did stay in Cary Hall then, but things had changed uh -huh. a little bit. Okay. And um, I, I went to summer school, and then in the fall, I went to the International Co-op House in, on Salisbury Street and stayed there. Okay. And, and uh, but we, we, yeah, we participated in as many things. We wanted to be inclusive. Sure as a group and um, we participated in the as many things as we could we the debating team uh i remember i even tried to get in the band and there's a guy named spots or something like that it's all tc band all male uh -huh. and he told me i had to pay 85 dollars for a uniform well i found out you didn't it's, it's a free uniform it's our OTC ball mail band, but I didn't have eighty five dollars, so I said forget that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we would we tried to be as inclusive as so you joined we possibly a could. Right, you joined quite a few clubs then. I joined the Black Fraternity. Okay. <laughs> Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity is the first Black Fraternity. Uh, it came about.
out in 1906 at Cornell University, and uh, I, they had a chapter there at Purdue, but we didn't have any house, but we were recognized by the university. Okay. Where, and, did, where would you get together? Did, where would you meet? We would meet in the union building, and uh, sometimes uh, uh, we would meet in the library of uh, different places on campus. I see. And, uh, and then we had uh, meetings in town. Uh, there were some students that had housing in town and some families in town. Um, the, uh, it, was, it was a unique thing. Uh, we had a, a, a part of the, uh, the corner of the Union Building, which a, between classes and, and conversing, and pass info and find out what was happening and it was by the entrance of the uh, memorial union okay. and uh, some of the boys had girlfriends they had parties but it, uh, a lot of the families uh, uh, in town were, were very receptive and they would invite us in their homes and there was a small black section of town around Selim Street they had a tavern at a barber shop, AME Church, and some restaurants is down there by uh, uh, San Elizabeth, down in that area. Okay. And then we used to play basketball at a grade school called Lincoln School, and it's by San East too. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Black Theater, the Lafayette Theater, you had to sit. Blacks had to sit in the balcony. But the odd thing about it. It was a good movie. It didn't make any difference because white people would come over there and sit next to you. <laughs> so that was really mm -hmm. counterproductive. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that time, uh, Lafayette was segregated. And, uh, but we had uh, our own good uh, social little group. That, and that caused us to be able to uh, uh, have our fun and, and so forth. Right. But uh, we also wanted to be very inclusive with the university, and we would try to get into everything uh, we could. I see now they they have a uh, a black student union that's so far off campus that people don't even go to the union building anymore. <laughs> I'm up there at a football game, and, and it doesn't seem to be as inclusive as it used to be. Maybe it is, I just can't see it. Yeah. But uh, we would go out of our way to try to get in university things. And with the help of a lot of, of white students, they wanted to see that too. We had a lot of friends up there at the time. Good. I made a lot of friends on the football team, like uh, Bernie Flowers, sure. Earl Hanniger, sure. Johnny Kerr. Johnny Kerr was my... Uh, in uh, zoology, in Mr. Goodnight, Dr. Goodnight's class, he and I were partners in zoology. Uh, it was it was just a impressive time for me. Um, we did have other black athletes there. Lively Bryant won a letter in track. Like I said, uh, my team, my roommate was Herman Murray, played football, and Ernie Hall would have played basketball. And he did for a little while. He was a transfer student from San Jose, but he got an altercation, and they dropped him from the sport. And he was all-state basketball player. But uh, it was a memorable time for me, the whole thing was. Yeah. Tell us a little about your family. Did, were you married at the time you were at Purdue? No. Oh. I, w I was a young single guy. I uh, uh, had no... <laughs> I had a girlfriend there from... And uh, there was only the girls had to pick of the bunch because there was forty. There was about forty guys and about ten girls, thirty or forty guys and about ten girls. So girls could pick whoever they want to if they wanted a date to go to the show. I mean, as far as black girls, sure. and uh, I didn't see much intermingling with the uh, white girls at all okay. at that time. Okay. Because they didn't go to school together, I guess, and they didn't really know each other. But I got along fine in class with everybody. Okay. And uh, now, when um, what did you ta um, 
did you, when did you graduate from Purdue? Well, now that's a long story. Okay. I graduated after I retired from my job. What happened? Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I left Purdue. It was about six hours short, and I think it was stat statistics and um, oh, there's another subject. And I talked with Professor Fendler, and he knew me way back in the '50s. He was my mentor, and and he and uh, and he told me if I take these courses in statistics and there was genetics, statistics and genetics, then I'd be eligible to graduate. And so I graduated in 1976. I was 46 years old. I came back in March, even. My goodness. Yes. Well, how about that? Why, why was there a gap uh, that you were not able to finish before? Well. Did you get called up again? And, uh, I was, uh, no, oh. after I was called up, I came back to Purdue. Okay. But uh, I, I got uh, on the police department here. Okay. In Indianapolis, I got a job, and I I didn't intend on uh, staying here in Indianapolis. But there's something about it. You get you get married, <laughs> you get a family, and I just stayed with it until I retired. Okay. And then I went down to. Uh, I was hired by the post office after I retired from the police department in the uh, inspection service, the postal inspection service, and I retired from there. Okay. But uh, do you uh, participate in the alum? Are you active in the alumni association? I am a lifetime member okay. in the alumni association. I have uh, two daughters. Uh, my wife is Dixie Ann Corley. And she is a retiree from ISTA. She stayed there 30 some years. And then I have two daughters. One is Paula Carley, and she's an educator. And then there's Debbie Carley, who graduated from Purdue in pharmacy, and she's a doctor of pharmacy. She's in Aurora, Colorado. Mm. She came out in the class of '82. Okay. And uh, she's uh, at the medical facility in, in uh, Aurora, Colorado. That's where she lives. Okay. Um, um, I, uh, do you still do it? Uh, when was the last time you came? Do you come to campus for any of the games now, or do you oh, visit the campus? Yes, I uh, was lucky enough to uh, be invited uh, to the campus uh, last fall to a football game. I get homecoming. Well, good. And um, that's uh, always that's always a big event. Yes, and and I met uh, oh I forget the basketball player guy that used to play basketball. He's an athletic assistant athletic director. I can't think of his name. And he showed me a good time, and uh, he wanted some information on um, black athletes at that time back in the fifties. I can't think of his name. He's on the faculty there. Okay. He's he's a basketball player, ex basketball player. Okay. But he's an older guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. I can't think of his name right now. But yes, I come to the. Uh, I've been coming actually to the games off and on since 1950. Very good. Uh, you yeah. know, since I was there. Sure. Okay. And I, as I said, I'm a lifetime alumni member. And Purdue was a very impressive part of my life. And uh, even though I graduated <laughs> quite late, uh, it opened doors for me. And I, later on, I earned a master's degree from Indiana University and put me on a different level of understanding. Okay. And, and, uh, Can you tell me when those last two courses, did you come on campus to take them, so that for your graduate, uh, the two that you needed to complete for your degree? No, I, I got those down here at IUPUI, but it was part of Purdue, it was the Purdue uh, program. The program. Okay. All and, right. with, and Dr., um, I mean, rather, Professor Friendler was the one that uh, told me to get these six hours and and Miss Stone was a Barbara Stone. Oh, Dean Stone and the. Uh, there was a lady. Anyway, uh -huh. she also was uh, told me what to do. I marched in the uh, graduation. It was, even though I was Very nice. a little gray at the temple, but 
<laughs> Very nice. It's a it's a nice ceremony. Yes, uh -huh. at Elliott Hall. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, do you have a particular favorite uh, Purdue tradition that anything comes to mind? Any tradition that you think about? Um, Would you like to share with the researchers? I, uh, uh, the things I think about mostly about Purdue was the friendship I had with the with Professor Friendler and, and the dean of the school. The, the school there, Coach Dean Reed, and those people, because without them, I would not have been at Purdue long. I don't think mm -hmm. they were my mentors. Mentoring is very key, very helpful. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Right. How about it? How about an outstanding event in your life? Do you have something that you'd like to share with us? Well, um, my most, I guess, one of the outstanding events was, like you say, of. Uh, uh, graduating from Purdue, but also to see my daughter graduate from Purdue in pharmacy in 82. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big event, but uh, the outstanding event, I've had many outstanding events at Purdue because, like I said, we were inclusive when we were breaking things in. Mm -hmm. And to be even to go out for football at that time at a Big Ten college was a big thing to me sure. That's right. and also being able to make a fraternity and things of that sort yeah. lots of things come into play there don't they yes right. yes uh -huh. any uh, any other comments that you'd like to share with us with the uh, researchers on the interview that uh, comes to mind well, I think we covered pretty much what uh, you'd like to, to share with us a lot of people even during that time even though it was you know, it's segregated times, a lot of, uh, and you weren't accepted in a lot of certain things. Uh, it didn't, we didn't notice that too much. You know, I guess because we were young and, and resilient and could bounce back from things, but uh, I can't think of any uh, real not positive things even though it's doing times, because we made our own social life, sure. really. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we were accepted in uh, things like when you had the, the ROTC proms and the things like that, we would participate in that. Mm -hmm. We would yep. go to them. Sure. And uh, so uh, as far as private things, we didn't, you know, we weren't even, we had our own little social life. Sure. But um, we wanted to be inclusive in everything. Good. So I can't think of anything none positive Good. at the time. Very Even lot. though it was segregated, we had to sit up in the and now I think about it in, in the show, if I would have put a turban on <laughs> I could have sat downstairs. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to uh, offend any foreign we had a lot of foreign students. Oh, in uh -huh. fact, I stayed at the International Co-op House where it's 16 students from every country in, in, the, uh, in the world almost. Uh -huh. And some of them you couldn't tell by skin color or whatever. Sure. So, uh, but if I would have put it, you know, I showed you how uh, uh, superficial that whole thing is, was. Uh -huh. And it all changed, thank good for the better. Sure. But, uh, but no, I have nothing but Good. Uh, good thoughts about Purdue, and it was during my young years. I'm 80 years old now, and it was, uh, and that was my undergraduate school. Very good. What are you, What are you doing now in retirement? Anything special you'd like to? Any activities? Well, I play golf. I go to the gym about twice a week. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, I. Uh, no, nothing special. Well, Just you keep, relax. And take, take one day at a time. And look forward maybe to coming up to a football game. Well, that will be fine. And uh, any closing comments, uh, Mr. Corley, that you can think of, or do you think we pretty much covered it for you? I think we pretty much covered it. Okay. Um, and I want to thank you for giving me this interview. Uh, if there's anything you want to ask me, you can ask Go ahead, and I'll right. try to answer it. I think we covered pretty much what we talked about, uh, your experiences at Purdue, and I really 
our appreciation on, for the our interview for the oral history program, and we will send you a draft transcript for you to look at. Okay, okay. well. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank um, you. I'll look forward to that. Thanks a lot, and my best to you. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.